they're like, oh, hold up. The uh, next day, he's like, Coach K wants to talk to you. I was like, yo. And then Coach K hits me. He's like, yo, the boys want you to be their stylist. I was like, oh, cool. Like, I never wanted to be a stylist. But, like, later down the line, Quavo told me. He's like, oh, yeah, man. He's like, they tried to put us with so-and-so. And I was like, nah, <laughs> Marco's my stylist. Man, you've been waiting for the drum beater. Beautiful people, mama, 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 do they home, do they studios, YouTube, TikTok, anywhere you guys are watching this. It's your boy Dominic from Do They Home, Do They Studios. I got my boy Danny here. We got a legend, like someone I'm like, yo, like we actually, he was cool with coming through. Like I was like, damn, like it's gonna be hard, but we did it, you guys. Facts. Papa, 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 we got Marco the kid. Motherfuckers on the gram, man. Like this dude gets my spirits up. As soon as I see you on the gram, man, just your energy. So for me, it's an honor to be here with you, brother. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that a lot. How? how welcome, thank you, bro. Beautiful people of YouTube, you guys, you guys, you guys, it's your, it's your boy Dominic from Do Day Home, Do Day Studios, all that good stuff. Don't skip this part, you guys, because the main sponsorship for today is nothing but the best from the block of models, Do Day Studios. Yes, I said it correctly, Do Day Studios. So if you guys want to support the channel, want to support us, all that good stuff, click on our website, www.dodaystudios.com. Subscribe, like, comment the video, because I know Daniel goes crazy with it. Whenever you guys comment or even liking it, he just like goes bananas, you guys. But thank you so much for tuning into this video. There's a legend in the building, you guys. You guys are gonna love this this um, pod, all that good stuff. I know I keep rambling, all that good stuff. But let's go back to it, you guys. And don't forget, check us out on Mauro seven three six one Mauro's Avenue. Peace. How how's everything with you? Chilling right now. Chilling. How, how was your Halloween weekend? Um, uneventful, man. I had a you know, family party, man. Uh, Brought out the old uh, Michael Jackson leather thriller jacket. You know, oh, shit. You should have let Daniel borrow it. I was, I was close. I was close. Um, yeah, no, I had this really dope one. Um, it's actually like a, the inverted Michael Jackson leather jacket. So it's black with like the red Vs on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one of those uh, pickups throughout the years. It's just collecting dust and, you know, comes out once a year for Halloween. So oh, Dominic shit. knows how to moon one. Yeah, I taught Daniel. Cheap, man. Taught, <laughs> I'll do it after. I'll do it after this. I'll, I'll kind of spread everything out, you know, and then just kind of run it, you know. Your, you know, master versus student. You gotta see who can. Oh you know, shit! Who can flex property, <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I know we talked about it literally like for the past half hour before we even started oh, this, like just, about we just hit the e everything. Basketball. Yeah, but um, how long have you been doing like streetwear and everything in general? Oh man, since. Since I heard Nas say the streets raised me up giving a fuck, I thought Jordans and the gold chain was living it up, man. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still living by that model right now, man. Like, That's crazy. But, I mean, all my life, dog, like, what, what helped me is hip-hop. I mean, music and my mom. Like, um, you know, my mom always put the sense of fashion in me. When you're a kid, you hate it. But she's always trying to tuck my shirt in and match your belt with your shoes and all that. Mm -hmm. So I got that from my mom. But um, luckily, I was raised by older brothers. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was listening to shit I shouldn't have been listening to, you know, when I was, like, 8, 9, and 10. And um, hip-hop influenced me. And, and um, I bring up Nas because when I first heard Nas, like, I love music, but I'm a very visual person. So I remember listening to Nas and... Um, wanted to like open the CD and see what he looked like. And he looked just as dope as he sounded. You know, when that dress is never nothing less than guess. And then you see him wearing like the the Nike windbreaker and you and you start Wait. seeing all your like your favorite rappers wearing Jordans. Like, you know, I got my first pair in a I was in third grade, man. My the Jordan fours got on sale because the fives came out. So like my influence came from like from music and from sports, you know, I remember growing up like the big baseball players like Ruben Sierra and Julio Franco they go up to bat with big old like gold ropes on them, man. Uh -huh. And like Ricky Henderson with the shades and like the neon covered um, batting gloves. And like 
that was my first love and then sports and music and the one thing that kind of tied them together for me was fashion like um, um so yeah for streetwear it was really hip-hop like growing up and like i said nas was influential wu-tang blew my mind because um, like you know nobody out here was dressing like that so like no. next thing you know man i'm like this kid in high school wearing wallabies and and fatigues and all that like <laughs> that's I just hard. lived it dog and then um and that's how like unknowingly that's how it started and then mm -hmm. um just like i said the influenced by the music i listened to like not only did i want to dress like them shit i wanted to rap too you know what i mean mm -hmm. and um did you ever make any songs oh yeah i did man but that's a whole other <laughs> podcast man uh, <laughs> but the long of it the short of it is that from there I just knew that I wanted to look and sound as dope as my heroes. So like, mm -hmm. that's what got me in the game is just my personal sense of fashion. And then in the midst of all that, um, the big homie, he used to flip sh um, Levi's, like Hawaiian's true vintage and sneakers to Japan in like the uh, mid nineties, early to mid nineties. So he got me onto that. Cause like, he pull up in his truck and he was like my brother's age, like seven years older than me. And he'd always have like every Jordan, like just chilling in his truck and in his garage. And like me being a little kid who loved Mike, like mm -hmm. I'd bug out because he had all these shoes. I'm like, what are you doing with these? And he's like, oh, I'm collecting them. I saw them in Japan. So like. Did you ever uh, end up getting a pair from him? Oh, yeah, dog. Like, he what was me, the uh, the first pair you got? Shoot. The first pair that he blessed me with was a pair of uh, of 85 one's white and neutral gray. Do you still have them? No, I think Damn. I still have them. What's funny is I wanted that pair so bad that I took a, a kid size off of him. Yeah. Because like, he would tell me like, yo, like if you find this Jordan or that Jordan, like I'll buy them off you. And like, for me, it was like, nah, like give me something I could wear. So like, that's how my whole thing in the vintage game started. And uh, I know I really went off track, but um, no, 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 it's pretty. Yeah, that was like, that was streetwear. It, was, it wasn't streetwear to me. It was just, you know, wanting to look like my favorite rappers. And then I eventually wanted to rap. And I knew that, like, I couldn't walk around rapping. So I was like, let me make sure I walk around looking like with some dope shit on. So whenever uh -huh. people see me, they'd be like, I don't know who he is, but he's got to be somebody. And, and that's kind of like, that's kind of what happened, man. I caught like a lot of my personal uh, style and wardrobe caught a lot of people's attention. Um, and I ended up getting more attention from my wardrobe than my music. So I just kind of followed that door that was open. Um. Um, but to tie it back full circle, uh, the homie I was telling you that put me onto all this stuff, like he's the one that had me going to flea markets when I was like in high school. And when he got out of the business, Cause like in the in the early to mid nineties, like the Japanese economy was booming, uh -huh. um, and then like as as like as their economy started to kind of dwindle down, like he got out of the game, but he linked me with one of his old clients, cause they were like, hey yo, like me and my wife are coming to town, can you take her around? And um, he was like, nah, I'm busy now, but uh, you have my boy Marco, and it's funny because I had only met the Japanese dude one time. And he remembered me because I had like an Afro and like a Ralph Lauren, like Czech Madra shirt with like some baggy ass jeans. Damn. And so he was like, oh yeah, he's like a California surfer style. Like, yeah, fuck with him. So I started working for that Japanese company like in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they were always like, she would come in town and and she'd go to like the, like the downtown wholesale district because they had a couple stores, like one store that sold like Women, like new women stuff and mm -hmm. they had like two vintage stores and so because I was working with her I would always be at, at flea markets and at like vintage warehouses looking for women's western boots and you know Adidas three stripe jackets or like Czech Madras shirts and in the middle of looking for that stuff I would find like pieces from my childhood like oh shit a Kuji sweater boom and I, I grabbed like you know, I'd be grabbing stuff for her, then I'd get my pile. Um, mm -hmm. I'd find Jordan sweatsuits. And that's mm -hmm. what really set it off for me because I was a huge Jordan head. Still kind of am. But I remember fighting like the Jordan tracksuits. Like, and again, it was like, 
I loved him because Mike wore them, but then I remember Flavor Flav wearing them in the cover of like the Public Enemy album. So like, and like the cool motherfuckers on TV back then wearing them and like, you know, it's stuff that when you're a little kid, you see the older heads wear. Uh-huh. And so as I got older and it was like the early 2000s, nobody was wearing like, like no one even thought about like the late 80s, early 90s shit. Like nobody cared. Everybody's Damn. wearing true religions and shit like that. You but, remember if, uh, if there was a certain piece where you were like, Dang, I think I'm a, I might start doing this like every day. Oh yeah, like um, I'm trying to think. I remember when I went to Japan, my boss gave me like my first Versace shirt because I remember I was into them already because like I think right. I found a random silk I thought was really dope, and then he blessed me with one, and then I remember when I was in Japan, like we ended up at some random like small little like uh, vintage boutique. And it was an older lady, and she said her daughter was an old Chanel runway model. And so That's I remember crazy. I bought my first little Chanel chain there and some Gucci glasses. Um, but I think the, the piece that really set me off over here is finding like a Jordan 5 tracksuit. Jordan 5 tracksuit? Yeah, and like to me, oh. that was like the illest thing in the world. Like my first pair of Jordans were the fours as a kid, and then I got the fives. And you know, like... Um, I remember, like, my mom, she worked her ass off, and anytime there was, like, some sort of family party, like, that, like she would take me and my brother shopping, and that was my whole thing, is, like, just to have, like, a cool Jordan t-shirt to mm-hmm. match, you know, my shoes, and, like, so I think ever since then, I remember trying to, like, like, get all those things that I wanted as a kid, and I think a lot of us, like, do that through this vintage game, like, finding pieces of nostalgia, you know what I mean? What was, uh, what was your go-to spot to shop at back then? And then what is what what is it now? Um, I love flea markets, dog. Like Marcus. I know a lot of people are into the bins and like Goodwills. Um, I never had any luck with them. I like being outdoors, man. Like right, like even like I remember get stuffy in the bins. Yeah, I, I never been there, man. I, I salute <laughs> oh, you guys. Like musty. Oh, I can't do it. Even like, I remember even like going to like the big warehouses where like I thought it was such a crazy like sight that there was tons of ladies there and their whole job was to like stack up clothes after you fucked them oh, up. Oh, they, they were like um, separate hippie. Yeah. yeah. Hippie. That's so funny you say that. Dog. Yeah, that was, that was their oh, thing. Oh, yeah, it's hippie. Uh-huh, and then they'll direct you towards the hippie. Yeah, yeah. and it's funny because you're in there just digging through shit and their whole job is to clean up your mess basically, man. Yeah. But I remember like even that I hated. Like it was cool because you'd find some shit but like I just like being outdoors so like I used to love the, the Rose Bowl, man. I still do you know, it's just it's I got a, a sentimental attachment to it, but the Rose Bowl is my spot. I love it. It's just so huge. What's what's the biggest bag you spent at Rose Bowl? Uh, I don't even pay attention, man. Like, Damn. Damn. Again, you know the items though, at least. Yeah, but it but it was like. And then we could get an estimate. But it's changed now, man. Yeah, we'll, because the we'll get a fat that, check. Your dollar went way further. Like right now, everything is super expensive. Like. So it's different. You know what I mean? Back then, yeah. you could walk in there with a couple hundred and just cash, out. Over, cash out. Yeah. My bread and butter used to be, uh, I used to love going out there looking for Jordans. And this was like, like before they got heavy into retroing. Mm-hmm. So you'd find like, you know, threes out there. You'd find a shitload of 11s. And like, it used to be my money, man. Like I was young and like, Go find Jordans, clean them up, and flip them on eBay. Yeah, bro. My my homie, uh, Babylon, he found a pair of 85 ones for, I think, like 250 bro, before the movie or anything came out. So, like, he bought them, put them, like, do you remember? You um, remember Babylon? Um, I don't remember him having no no 85s. No, he still has them, bro. All right, I'll yeah. tell you this. See the prices on those now? I Jesus. got Crazy. I'm popular I'll get opinion. Some lawn vaunts instead. I love KO, AJ KOs over over regular low leather Jordans. Really? Yeah. And I remember like you would always see them at the Rose Bowl, beat to shit hanging for like, I mean I'm talking about totally beat for like three to four hundred bucks, which back then was expensive. Mm-hmm. I got lucky. I got my pair of OG. AJKOs, damn your dead stock. The only problem was, um, you know, whoever wore them wore them, and the like the denim kind of wore off the uh, the mm-hmm. the wing logo. Yeah, twenty four bucks. Damn, dude didn't know what they were. Like 
And it was funny because he wasn't one of like, like the OG vendors that are there at four thirty in the morning. Like, mm-hmm. I got there late one day, like at eight a.m., which is like horrendous. He was probably on like, standby. No, no, he was <laughs> like, he was a dude clearing out his house. He wasn't like, oh. like a junk sale. And I, right when I walked through his lane, we put him up on top of his van. Mm-hmm. What do you think and he I got was him like, from? I was like, how much for those Jordans? He's like, you mean these Nikes? The moment he said that, I was like, yeah, the Nikes. 25 bucks. Damn. I was like, dog, I got 24. It was like the last 24 I had. And like, yeah. like I remember back in the day, you could score deals sometimes, man. Yeah. Where, where do you think he got it from? I think they were in his fuck. They were either his or his dad's. Like, Damn. I'm telling you, it was like a dude. Like, it wasn't like a vintage seller. It was like mm-hmm. a guy. Like, oh, I'm gonna do a yard sale. Let me just go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, that's crazy. So like, you know, everybody. That's I think my craziest find ever, man. And I still got them to this day. Do you have like certain tips for any beginners out there looking? How can I get good at at finding good stuff at the Rose Bowl? Because you know, there's a lot of people. They're like. And you know, I go to the flea market, I go to Rose Bowl, I don't find anything. Um, What's their issue? How can you help them? Don't go looking for shit. Just go oh, have shit. fun, man. Like, have fun. Enjoy your day in the sunshine. It's man. the intention. Yeah, yes. enjoy the beautiful woman yeah. changing in front of you, man. Oh, like, shit. Enjoy your lemonade, enjoy the scenery. Like, um, and just see what like the universe brings to you, man. Like, it's so much fun. Yeah, because exactly. one that makes sense because when we go, we're t- we're two uh, we're two in there. You know, he's uh, he's off running looking for V loan. I'm off looking. <laughs> Wait, okay, you always throw V loan, bro. I haven't worn V loan in forever, bro. I literally thought that um my boy Kendall right here was wearing V loan like on oh, Saturday, shit. bro, but he wasn't. <laughs> no, now it's uh, what's the other one? It's endless now. Have you seen that? Endless? No, what is that? No. It's his new brand. Oh, what? Yeah, but oh, it looks the, the same, but it just has endless. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Oh shit! I like that. I'm gonna start saying that. You should say that, bro. You should. That's a that's one of those like vintage T-shirts. So so you would say that um that Nike got you f- was was first before designer oh, yeah. stuff. A, again, Nas, I'm a Nike head. I would mm-hmm. change it, excite the fed. No, but I'm saying like with like the vintage pieces, like when you first started like reselling it. Um, here's stuff. the funny part, dog. Like. I never did it to resell it. Like to me, it was like I saw just these, collecting. Yeah, the, I saw, cur- the curation. A, Marco the curator. To yeah. me, clothing is art. You know, when you think of the word curator, to me, it came from like a museum curator, somebody who curates the fine art of a museum. To me, clothing is art. Like, um, yeah, I just I to me, I w- I would find these. It wasn't even vintage to me. They were timeless pieces. Like I said, I would find a. Jordan track suits that I remember like, you know, when you bought the shoes and it came with the, the it wasn't a retro card, it was like the OG card and it showed uh-huh. like the whole line of clothing. You know, you're a little kid. I was happy to get Jordans, man. I wanted everything else, but like, uh-huh. um, that was my first passion, Jordan. So like growing up and then all of a sudden seeing like, you know, being at a flea market or being like at a warehouse, like I said, because I was working for a Japanese company and so because of that, I was out there in that world. Um, but I would find track suits. I would find Kooji sweaters. I'd be like, oh, shit, this is what Biggie wore. Like, uh-huh. oh, a silk shirt. Yo, that's what Raekwon used to wear. Like, so my collection just started growing. And um, and like I said, um, I ended up getting more attention from my wardrobe than my music. And, like, people started to be like, yo, where'd you get that? And I'd be like. Oh yeah, I got it. Like I won't go and say, "Oh, I can swap you." Like, <laughs> like, oh, you know, that's what I do. Like, oh shit, man. That's what I do. Yeah. So like Can't a lot of people it. in this industry know me as a stylist. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to be a stylist, but I had like, well, I had a pretty cool had... personal style that people started asking me to style them. Like, yeah. Like I think a lot of people, or I don't know if they do or don't know, but. Um, I styled the Migos. I used to like me and Quavo I was gonna was, go into that. was heavy, mama. and it was because yeah, Mama. Um, <laughs> rest in peace, Tate, man. That was special. Yeah. Um, but you know, when they came out here to shoot the the, um, hope I'm not jumping ahead too much. No, no, no. This is this is perfect timing because yeah. I was gonna ask you. About okay. It. Um, yeah, I was styling a few other people before that, mm-hmm. and like I said, like the first um. I used to make music, like I said, and um, 
And the dude who I was, who was my producer, he was making music for himself too. And he was starting to get like a little radio play. So we started bartering like, oh, hey, you got some jackets I can wear? I got a red carpet or you got a pair of Kazals I can wear for a video? Yeah, so I was, he was my first client per se. Uh -huh. And I would lace him for studio time. Uh -huh. And then finally, like, he kind of started taking me out to industry parties. And once I, once I hit, like, he took me to my first little jump off, it was game over because people was like, who's this motherfucker? Uh -huh. And, um, and then the first like real big person I started styling was a dude for um, who used to be signed to Bad Boy Records, King Los. Uh -huh. um, he used to write for Puff. And um, like I said, I met him through a mutual friend. And I wasn't even trying to style nobody, but they were just like, they knew I had the plug on all his gear. Uh -huh. Do you remember um, uh, what outfit you put him in the first time? Oh, um, yeah. Um, or was it, was it all Gucci? No, nah, it was a Chanel silk bomber. Oh. And I had the matching yeah. glasses. And then uh, I took him to my barber and then put designs in his head. Like, shout out my, my man, Global Cuts, man. He's one of the first OGs out here who was doing, like, designs and shit in their head. Um, but, yeah, from there, my name spread out. Like, people knew I was that dude who had, like, crazy gold chains and, like, the, the all, of, all, like, the vintage Versace sunglasses that Biggie wore. Um so then when the, when Migos started popping off, when Drake topped on the Versace remix, they came out here to do the video and they started asking around like, yo, we, who got Versace out here? So my phone started ringing from different like producers and uh, everybody was trying to get the gig. So I had a couple friends like, yo, I'm, I'm doing the video. Like, can you, uh, I rent some stuff from you? Yeah, so like, I, you know, sending people pictures of what I had. And then finally the director himself hit me and I sent him, you know, pictures too. And he was like, yo, like, I guess he had seen the other people trying to say that they had it. Uh -huh. He's like, well, where's all this stuff? I was like, in my closet. Like, and they're like, oh, <laughs> hold up. Uh, next day, he's like, Coach K wants to talk to you. I was like, yo. And then Coach K hits me. He's like, yo, the boys want you to be their stylist. I was like, oh, cool. Like, I never wanted to be a stylist. But like, later down the line, Quavo told me. He's like, oh, yeah, man. He's like, they tried to put us with so-and-so. And I was like, nah, fuck that. Marco's my stylist. And like. And that's what led to the relationship with them. And then it just kind of, for me, it kind of spread word of mouth. I was never too much like into Instagram. I'm like a, uh -huh. as even though, as, you know, my gold ear may not say it. Um, I'm a humble dude, man. I'm kind of quiet. I let my clothes uh -huh. speak for themselves. Yeah, let, let the words What's speak. Uh, yeah. your favorite Migos song? Uh, Versace. Oh, um, Versace. Well, that, it's a classic. But, uh, but honestly, I think T-shirt. T-shirt. Oh, yeah, that was beautiful. Right now, for me, it's a uh, handsome and love. Handsome and love. Uh, all that, handsome. all that early Migos stuff, like Fight yeah. Night, um, Anna Montana. You be looking at me. Oh God, that shit's hilarious, <laughs> dog. Did, I love it. But um, did you ever go in the studio with them? Oh yeah, I mean, we were super. Tight. And were you wearing Damn, a Versace shirt crazy. all the fucking time? Like, and I, was it half button? Oh, there was no button. Oh, Come geez. on, you got the photography show, man. <laughs> um, nah, but we was really cool. We was tight and like. Quavo definitely showed me love. Like, like I remember I met them, and, you know, and I, I laced everybody for that video. Like, there was also, shout out Mike B. Like, he was the stylist, like, who they'd hired, and he's an OG, dog. Like, uh, uh, if y'all don't know Mike B, like, yo, he's an OG. Respect, brother. Um, but like I said, they wanted to have as much Versace stuff, so my name got thrown in the mix. And then once they saw, like, you know, like I said, it was all my personal closet. And once they saw that, like, Quavo especially fuck with me heavy. It, all of them. When I first met them, Offset was still in jail. So mm. it was Take Off and Quavo, who I met first. And, mm -hmm. you know, they loved what I brought. And, like, we shot the video. And then after the video, the next day, they're like, pull up to the telly. And they bought so much shit off me, man. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of those first videos they did, like, I kind of, like, low-key style without being there. It was all stuff they had bought for me, like... You uh -huh. see a lot of early pictures of them wearing like the silk bombers, like the Hermes bombers, yeah, and the Chanel bombers. That all came from me, and like, and then even when the shit evolved, and like, like, like the Metallica shirts got really heavy, like, and uh -huh. everybody started going to the vintage stuff. Um, I had them in like Led Zeppelin shirts and Pink Floyd shirts and U two shirts. Uh -huh. Like, um, I saw you sold them. You sold them the Pink Floyd, the purple one. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was a crazy that piece. Yeah, and it's yeah. funny because it, it was. It was always like some personal shit. Like I'd wear it and be like, "Oh, what's up with that?" 
Like, yeah, I yeah. What's it. what's your favorite uh piece that you had sold to them? Um Takeoff has that Pink Floyd shirt, the wall. Well he had it. Yeah. Bless bless it. Bless his heart, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh that one. Um what else? A couple of Versace shirts. Um nothing really, man. I, I there's a I think like the pieces I really, really love the most I didn't show it them because I knew like I'm never gonna see it again. Um Quavo really liked this really dope Led Zeppelin shirt, uh, all over print. It was actually mm-hmm. a plant page shirt. Um, oh. but the back had the Zeppelin hit and the front had uh, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. But Damn. to me, as much as I didn't want to let it go, I was like, yo, I love Led Zeppelin. And I'm sure some kid who has no idea who they are mm-hmm. is gonna find out Google them and get into them yeah. because they saw Quay wear that shirt. And then so to me that was like the best justification is like all right, I get to spread like my sauce like mm-hmm. inadvertently, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then fine. as the universe has it, I found a few months later I ended up finding the black version of it. So I was like, all right, <laughs> God is good, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, and you think about it, it's used clothing, so sometimes you got to sell shit in order to, to the recycle cycle to keep and come going. back to you. Yeah. Who yeah. are some of uh, your favorite people that you've worked with aside from the Migos? Oh, um my favorite, you know, okay. My favorite, hands down, is Eric Bellinger. I don't know if you guys are familiar with yeah. him. He's an R&B dude. Yeah. I fucking love him. Because he always has a great sense of style. And, um, you know, we were able to work together to develop looks for his tour. And um, it was it was awesome because he loved clothing just as much as I did. Mm-hmm. And, like, I did something with him that I would never do with anybody else. I took him to the Rose Bowl with me. Really? And he, he was like a kid in a candy store. But like his love for fashion and stuff like that was like mm-hmm. so huge that I was like, yo, dog, I got to put you up on game. Let's go. How uh-huh. much did he get from the uh, Rose Bowl? <laughs> dog. And did you need to call it you? Oh, almost. Just about, dog. Like, um, but nah, he like, uh, that's my man. I love him. And like, it was cool because like, he, you know, it's always dope when like someone trusts your word completely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like just on little simple things, not nah, go with this instead of that. All right, if you say so. Like so, it's always a great feeling to know that like somebody trusts your judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, Did that he was have one. a great taste in like picking? Oh yeah, he's got a dope sense of style. So for me, it was fun. So we got to like it was easy. Each other. What were some of the pieces that he he was picking out? Oh god, there was so much I can't even remember. Uh, you know what? One of the pieces we loved, I picked it out for him, and he loved it. Uh, this wasn't even a vintage one. This was a uh, contemporary piece. It was a vest by Walter Van Berentock. Um, mm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but he's like one of the Antwerp Six uh, yeah. OGs. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was this beautiful vest we, we used for a video for a song he did with him and Chris Brown called Type Away. Um, but that vest was just fire. And like, that's, uh, like, that's Kenny's favorite song. Oh, for Type real? Away? I love yeah. that song. And, um, it's crazy because nobody was really oh, fucking with nice with song. um with Walter Van Buren Doc until like I put Bellinger in it and then I put Wizkid in a few of those pieces. Wizkid was another great artist to work with. It was cool to work with the international. Damn, artist. for real, Which, Wizkid too. Oh, Wizkid was amazing, dog. Which one was your favorite? Or who do you think is uh, your personal favorite from the Antwerp Six? Oh, Walter. I mean, I love Raph. I love Margiela, and I think right. Margiela is like an honorary member of Raph. But I like Walter. I've always loved Walter. And, like, I thought it was cool that, like, after I... Nobody was fucking with that because it was really obscure. It was like, if he knew, he knew. Now they're getting pretty... Um, oh, yeah. He's in, he's in Dover now. Oh, yeah. And I feel like I, I was, like... I mean... I feel like I had a lot to do with, with, with him starting to blow up. Because, honestly, I'd, I'd never seen anybody wear him before. And then I put him on... I put it on um, Kid. I put it on uh, Eric, and then all of a sudden I see Uzi wearing it, and like it kind of blew up. So I think I don't want to toot my own horn, but like I think I've always had that like that that touch where like I put it on the right people. Where like my you know my following is small, but I'm you know they always say like it takes somebody to influence somebody who influences the masses, mm-hmm. and I feel like my role in all this has been like that one little like pebble that drops that starts a ripple you know what i mean like mm-hmm. um like vintage is so hot right now but like i really feel like i helped usher that move in like 
Mm -hmm. know, people weren't really rocking with it like that and like knowing how to mix the high and the low. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had a lot of good fortune working with people that were really cool. I think one of my favorite ones, uh, this little girl, she's not so little now, she's like 19, her name is Sunny Days. But I started working with her when she was 10. Her name is Sunny Maloof. And that one was fun because I like, I got to have like a real life Barbie doll. Were you putting her also in Walter Van Buren? Dude, I was crazy? putting her. I was putting her in like Moschino Couture, like, but like, cause you know Moschino had like a real like tongue in cheek vibe. Yeah. So it worked perfect for like a little kid, cause I remember like they wanted to make her a little pop star at ten years old. Uh -huh. So I was like, how do I do this? So like I remember pitching it to him. I was like, I was like, what would you, what would Rihanna or Katy Perry look like as a kid. Like, how do you make that age appropriate at 10 years old? Mm -hmm. And the parents loved it. And like, I that was the funnest time because it was like developing somebody and it was a kid. So you got to have fun, but like throw in some, like find a cool way to throw in designer stuff or little kid stuff. So that was the funnest time. So she was fun. Eric Bellinger has been amazing to work with. Um, being, 21 being, Savage was fun as hell, too, because he just oh, has, he was just yeah. such a cool vibe, man. Like, and he took, like, that was like an editorial shoot, um, so I only got to work with him once. But Do you again, remember the pieces you sold to 21? Oh, yeah. Uh, that one was fun, too, because I had just started on my on one of my side projects. Uh, it's called Dr. Guchenstein, where mm -hmm. I take a bunch of, like, vintage uh, Gucci silk scarves, and then I repurpose them into shirts. Oh. And so I had just started doing that and I had a shoot with him. So I he, he got to like wear one of my first pieces and it was dope. It was for wow. a, a magazine cover shoot. And like yeah. I said, he was just super cool. Like, all right, what do you want me to wear? This? Oh, cool. Like, like he wasn't mm -hmm. like there was no ego. Was like, this before like, this the his hit song or no, was this was he was already after? popping. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what was out. Can't think what song was out at the time, but he was already well known. Mm. Yeah, so he was from bank what? account. No, f a fact check. What was the first song of um One, two, three. of twenty one that was like that was like a hit? Okay, I'll tell you this: the day we shot, I think a week later, he broke up with Amber Rose. So it was a, it was oh. like around the Amber Rose time. Oh, a Amber Rose time. Okay. So he was already popping. I mean, but he's way more popping now. But so with with the people that you've worked with, um, is there anyone else that you haven't worked with yet that you would want to? Uh, I don't know. You know, like I said, I I never really wanted to be a stylist. I just kind of walked into like certain situations, and yeah. that's why I kind of walked out as well. So, um, you you got the song? Was the song there? The, his first number one is Rock. But I do have a question for you. Yeah, what's up, man? Do you think that gold grills or like just jewelry in general can be dressed up or down? Yeah. Dressed up at least. Yeah, like you think about like when I think of grills, I think of Wu Tang and they were grimy motherfuckers with fucking gold fangs. So like mm. I lost mine recently. Huh? You lost yours? Yeah. Damn. I'm trying to get uh the whole like all the teeth gold, and then wear, wear that shit with the tuxedo. That'd be hard. That'd be and then hard. you think about cash money. I'm gonna wear that at uh, Dom's wedding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Gucci suit. That's crazy. Uh, cash money. <laughs> White tees with grills. Like, yeah. so they can get like ASAP dresses it up. You can see him in a full suit or a tux with a nice little gold tooth. Like, yeah, little Yachty right now. He's going crazy too. Oh, word? Yeah. I'm not the biggest Yachty fan. You're not interesting. Yeah. In terms of music or in style? Uh. Because recently, too, he's been getting a lot of uh, appreciation for his style. Yeah, yeah by style Drake. kind of cool, but I just never got like, I never fucked with his music. Yeah, maybe back then his music wasn't the most, like, oh, let me just play it, uh -huh. you know? But now his music kind of became better. He rebranded himself pretty good. I did notice that. So yeah, like, so I, his, I fits are, his fits are good. And then he's helping Drake with his fits. So, like, oh, it's, yeah. he's kind of, like, cropping them, you know? You know what's funny? Also though? Daniel, too. You know what's funny is I work with WizKid and I work with the Migos and both like the big video or the first videos I did with both of them were songs with Drake features and he didn't show up to either of them but like I remember thinking like when I did the, the Migos one because I, I wasn't really hip on them yet 
I remember I was like, fuck, I'll do it just for the for the for the small chance that Drake pulls up. Cause I want to be like, yo, so Drake. So you're a big, uh, you're a big Drake fan. No, but Drake, I mean, Drake dresses like trash, and it's funny because oh. like, well, he's still. Gotten, do you think that's still? Oh, he's gotten better, but it's just real simple. Nice. Like, but back then, it's like <laughs> super facts. That dude had like dope pieces, just didn't know how to put them together. Like, mm. so like I remember thinking in the back of my head when we did the Versace video, I was like, I'm gonna do it just on the. On the chance, the slight chance that he might be there, because they were already saying. He so wasn't you, going so to. you had an extra one on the side, like an extra I large. Mean, you know, you always got some extra. St- you, know, you always take <laughs> extra stuff. It's funny because I remember we took so much stuff that day. Like Sean Kingston pulled up to the video, so I put him in a shirt. Soldier Boy pulled up. We oh, placed oh. Him. Well, do you, was he the first one to ever put on a Versace shirt? Fuck yeah, man! He tried to walk. <laughs> like, we got him dressed. He did his cameo and then walked off wearing my shit. Like, and you know what? Did he take it off? No, oh, shout out to um, uh, Quavo and Takeoff. They had my back. I called him like, yo, get your fucking ass back over here. Like, that shit ain't cool. Mm-hmm. So he came back just to drop off the glasses and the and the shirt that he was trying to take Damn, off. so they checked them. Oh, yeah, man. I'm telling you, like, we was mad tight. Like, have, it's, have, it's still all love. Have you met uh, Drake? I've never met Drake. No. What would you put him in now if you could stop him? Uh, and would it be Versace? I don't know. I guess what he's feeling, what I'm feeling, we'll figure it out. Like, I'm, I'm not that much of a Drake fan. I'm like, I think he's dope as hell, but it's not like I'm, I'm scheming. Oh, yeah. I put him in? Like, I can though. I could, that's a good question. I'm stuck. Um, with all this, like, I know what uh, Dom would put him in three days. Yeah, Dude you know Studios, 7361 Melrose Avenue. I that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, I saw that you were, that you went into like working with Pawn Stars in the oh, movie, yeah, like the movie, the TV show. <laughs> um, they how was really that? Like that in real life? You know what? They 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 are those characters. Like Rick always has that like face where he looks mean, mm-hmm. but then you talk to him, he's cool. Corey's cool. Chumley's cool. He's funny. He's real knowledgeable. Um, on, on you know, clothes and fashion, like he's a, he loves like the Yu Gi Oh and the Pokemon. Have you cards. have you seen his uh, collection? Nah, I'm not really into cards like that, man. Uh-huh. Like, um, you know, we got along because you know he likes fashion. So. No, but also like in terms of like his clothes, and, like his shoes. Cause I know in the show they kind of mm-hmm. mentioned that he's big in to shoes and stuff. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, we're not like super super tight. Uh-huh. I'm going to kill the devil, man. Yeah. But there's a mutual respect, like. Uh, we were introduced by a mutual friend, and uh, we hit it off. So, like, you know, I've kind of been their go-to um, uh, fashion expert, like cl- vintage clothing expert. So uh, I was fortunate enough to do a couple shows with them, and I thought it was so cool because I was a fan of the show to begin. Mm-hmm. You know? So <laughs> yeah. when they hit me up and asked me if I wanted to do it, I was like, oh, yeah. What's, uh, what's been your favorite segment on that show? Um, what's been my favorite segment? Um, Did you have to legit check some Yeezys? Oh yeah, no, I didn't do. I haven't done those shoes yet, but um, I checked some like Chanel pieces for him. Uh, some Were they legit? Pieces. Yeah, everything was legit. Um, uh, one of them was a, uh, it was a super dope, um, uh, Garbage Pail Kids T-shirt. It was oh. super dope, but it was like a kid size, which makes sense because like, I mean that was a kid's thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, th- I, I just thought, like, dang, this would have been so dope if it would have been, like, an adult size. Mm-hmm. But it was, like, a kid's large, like, shrunken down over 30 years. Mm-hmm. But it was still such a cool thing to see because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an old head. Like, I remember Garbage Pail Kids. Like, that shit yeah. was cool. So, like, that was our, like, you know, our Pokemon. Because, like, I'm a little bit too old for Pokemon. But when I was mm-hmm. a kid, like, Ice Cream Man passed by and you bought your ice cream, your piece of gum, and your pack of garbage pail kids man mm-hmm. so, do, do you still like if you see them do you still get them or what the garbage pail kids oh no no nah. i need i needed to like tone back the hoarding man so I just, yeah i was gonna ask you how's your hoarding like how like how is it oh it's rough like you know i think i've cleared it out a little bit um because i'm still trying to learn are, oh. are there like versace shirts everywhere oh yeah like it's funny too because like i never wanted to sell them you know what i mean like yeah. Um, I love them. Like I, I'm one of those dudes who like I'll buy something and then I won't wear it for two, three years. But it's just like, I needed to buy it. I needed it. You know what I mean? But it'll come mm. in handy. And like, and it's funny because that's, in theory, how I became a stylist. Like I buy so much shit. Like, 
my closet just kept getting bigger. And then like... Is that the number one advice for stylists? Just buy as much as you can. Yeah, I think... Well, yeah. Be, be and, selective. You know, don't show just, your personality. Don't just blow your dough. Yeah, but be selective. Like for me, that's what helped me become a stylist. I never wanted to be a stylist. Um, but it came from my personal wardrobe. Like I bought clothes that I thought were dope. And I never liked wearing what anybody else had. Mm-hmm. So like if I found an old Kuji, an old like Versace silk, I'm like, oh, this is hard and nobody has this. Like, and it's funny because like after like like the Versace video like blew up, like Versace started retro and shit. You know what I mean? Like, like you, like mm-hmm. you, they they paid attention. They they were put on notice that like oh people like the old shit. What are your like, um favorite designer brand outside of uh, Versace? Versace is my favorite. Uh, Ralph, Ralph Lauren. Um, yeah, OG that's, in that's the game. American uh, designer. Mm-hmm. Um, him, like, like that whole Guggenstein project I'm doing, where I'm taking like the, the uh, silk scarves and remaking them into shirts. Um, that was inspired by old low heads, like the, the low life crews, like uh, mm-hmm. of the dudes that used to go heavy with the lo- with the polo in New York and Chicago. They would do that to you know to one up the next guy. They would take, they go buy like these huge, you know, two or three um, Ralph Lauren silk scarves and put them together and make a shirt. Uh-huh. So like just knowing that from my older friends who did that, that put that in my head where I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna do that with Gucci. So like Ralph Lauren, um, Yves Saint Laurent, um, but yeah, I think Versace holds the spot for me. I, I'm a sucker for silk. So I mean, it's Cali. It gets hot. Nothing feels better like silk on me. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Yeah, that's crazy. No, the hoarding, the hoarding. Yeah, the hoarding. Oh, thank you. Yeah, like, because it was like, I'm, you know what? After like like the pandemic, I've calmed down a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for pandemic reasons and for other reasons. You know, yeah. Uh, I had a dance with the devil real quick. Um, but yeah, because like for me, it was buying clothing for myself. Mm-hmm. And then... I would start seeing things. I'd be like, fuck, that doesn't fit me. That's too dope to pass up. Yeah. And then, oh, shit, that's a fire woman's piece. Like, I ain't going mm-hmm. cry or nothing, but, like, that's just too dope to pass up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's how, like, my archive started. You know what I mean? And, like, mm-hmm. and then I did finally have to, like, um, tone it back down. Because when you first start buying stuff, you're buying everything and anything. And then finally you just start fine-tuning into what you really, really like. Yeah. Like, I remember back in the day, like, I was buying, like, every, like, like, every dope, like, caricature NBA shirt, like, mm-hmm. old Larry Bird shirts, mm-hmm. old, like, Charles Barkley shirts, like, shit that I like, but I'm like, all right, like, what do I really like? And then you start fine-tuning shit. So. Is, there, is there a piece that is your favorite amongst everything else you have in your collection? Um, there's a couple pieces. There's a... My first Versace shirt, the one I told you that my boss gave me from Japan. Do you still have it? Well, the funny thing is um, I rented it out. Like, a lot of, like, like, things when it came to styling, I didn't have anybody to ask how to do it right. I kind of just winged it. Like uh, like I said, I got kind of, I don't want to say forced, but I got drug into being a style. Like, oh, your shit's dope. Come on, you must style this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck it if I can make money. But, like, I didn't know about contracts and this and that starting off. And um, the style pool, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, you live and learn. And my favorite one actually, I had rented it out to Trinidad James, um, for his first tour to his stylist, mm-hmm. and I never saw it again. Damn, oh, still owe me money. What's up, Renato? <laughs> still waiting for that check, man. Quit bullshitting. What piece was it? It was it, luckily. The universe brought it back to me. I don't know if it was that exact same one because uh-huh. I, I think Trinidad gave it, gave it out yeah. after the show. It, I'll show it to you. It's a uh, beautiful Versus by Versace shirt. You know, most Versace shirts are silk and then they have like their their sub brands. And this one was a Versus one, so it was cotton. Mm. But yo, dog, it was oversized and it was like, like this Persian prince motif. Mm. And it was like black. With neon green and like, like neon pink uh, accents, mm-hmm. just the most gorgeous shirt ever. I have that, um, and I have this like really super dope long sleeve Versace T-shirt that has like this rainbow Medusa embroidered on it. 
So those are, I think, the, like the two pieces that I love the most. Um, I think we need to buy some Versace after this podcast. Oh, yeah, literally, bro. It's inspiring. Get some yeah. shirts for the weekend. You know, it's, it's, well, hold on, wait, that and the Jordan 1 full track suit, like the full jump cover Yeah. Suit, that one, bro. I can't let go of that. Man. Do you sleep in the Versace shirts? Oh, no. Um, yeah, but you never got into like things, right? Like movies, like like cassettes, toys, oh, anything like that. I did. I used to love like, I mean, like Star Wars toys and like Voltron and this and that. But like mm-hmm. I said, I just knew that it was getting out of hand. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I remember I gave those to like my boys, like son. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm just gonna focus on clothing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I regret I used to have those. I'm a big Beatles fan. I had the set of like the McFarlane toys. Yeah. The yellow submarine one. So I kept the John Lennon one and I opened it and it's like, it's in oh, one of my bookshelves. That's fine. So a couple little random things, but like it, it becomes overwhelming dog. Mm-hmm. So, no, and, it, yeah. and it becomes expensive too. So like, yeah, expensive life. So yeah, if anything, I stick to my clothing and my shoes. You know? Yeah. B- besides Trinidad, what, what other, do you have another bad experience with like another artist that, Never gave you your stuff back or anything like that. That one was uh, Trinidad was the worst one. That was like one of the first big ones to live in there. Um, um, that first dude I used to work with, Los, like I used to just let him like, you know, certain shits would get lost here and there. But like, mm-hmm. he also opened the door for me to get inside like the bad boy camp. So it's like, chop um, it up as an L. Like, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some shit goes wrong. Um, so do you not now? Do you not? Um, Listen to any Trinidad James. Uh, Here he is, is turning it off. Is there any Trinidad James you listen to now? No, but but he he is uh, oh, I think he's sexy Red's manager. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. You know what? I respect his hustle. He's dope. Yeah. And it wasn't like it wasn't any bad blow with him. It was more with his style. We need yeah, to maybe see sexy Red and Yeah, you know? he did it because like the style is like. And it's funny because I did it over a handshake. I only charged him like a small amount just to put something on the books. And then when it all came back finally, that was like the one that was missing. I'm like, oh, it's it's probably in his closet. I'll get it for you. And kept bullshitting me like that for a while. And then finally, I just hit up to the guy himself. I was like, yo, what's up with this shirt? He's like, oh, man, I gave it away to somebody. I, I gave it away to a fan after a concert. Bro, that was mine. Damn. Uh, he's like, you got to take it up with, with homeboy. Yeah. So I was like, I couldn't get too mad at him. I mean, mm-hmm. part of me was, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, man. Yeah, like, I feel like he would have understand because right now he's like super like in the fashion cultures. Yeah. And street, he's you know, been it, you know, he's always been, but now he's like with complex. You know, doing the like I think it's like sneaker shopping or something like that. Oh, no, so. respect to him because even back then, he was really into fashion. Matter of fact, I blessed him with it. Like I met him before he got signed. Like, oh really? Um. Um. All gold or everything, or mm-hmm. don't believe in this watch, whatever. It just gone viral, mm-hmm. and he was out here because every label was trying to sign him. And um, like I said, the funny thing is, I was already rocking with like Bad Boy Records, mm-hmm. um, and the A and R at Bad Boy was taking him out. He he came out here because he was supposed to perform at a Tisa show mm-hmm. on Halloween, and that day, like the, you know, the, everybody was trying, every label was trying to wine and dine him. And the A and R bad boy had was taking him down Fairfax, and he was looking at like he was at four two four, looking at sunglasses. And the the dude at bad boy was like, "Oh, is that what you're looking for?" Called me, he's like, "Yo, Marco, pull up to the tail. He's like, "Trinidad, bought some glasses." So that's what we met, and I laced him with like his first silk shirt. Like, really? what type of glasses did you put on him? Oh, I, I, dude, I blessed him. It was like this really super dope pair of like. 80s Korea, made in Korea sunglasses. Like it wasn't a brand name, but the frame was super hard. I'll send y'all the pictures. I think I have it somewhere. And just on, you know, on the strength, I said, yo, you can have this, man. Like, mm-hmm. I know you ain't signed yet. And he was mad love because like a month later he got signed. He was like, yo, pull up to the video. And like we bought some pieces and like I was actually in the video. And I think uh, the video ultimately ended up getting shelved. Um, mm-hmm. He had some cool history. Uh, no love lost. You know, yeah. Can can we ask you some rapid questions? Yeah, what's up? What's your favorite sunglasses brand? Zong. Zong. Mm. Favorite go to place to get some good clothes at? Shenanigans business. Oh, shit, I need a business. <laughs> yeah. um, no, you know what? Um, 
I used to love Barney. Barney was super dope. Um, um, H. Lorenzo is super dope. And it's crazy because now H. Lorenzo and this guy Karen from Vintage Pizza, so that's even doper. Uh, there's this really dope spot on Melrose. It's called Dude Day! Oh, 7361 Dude Day. Melrose Avenue. Let's um, go. I love Sorrento. I, I love flea markets, but you never know what you find. And to me, I've always prided myself on my eye. Like, like I'm not a label. I'm a style. You know oh, what I mean? shit. So like it could be some dope ass shit and have no name to it, but like. Can can he put that in the notes? <laughs> They're putting that on a t shirt. It's my next caption. There it is, man. <laughs> oh, um, what's your favorite meal after you just found like the best piece of the year? Is it something sweet? Is it something sweet? I got a sweet tooth like a motherfucker, yeah. So, um, sea bass at Bossa Nova. Oh. Oh. So after you just found like a grill Versace shirt, you going straight to Bossa Nova. Oh shit! Depends how much money I spent on it. I might have to go to fucking Jack in the Box. <laughs> and then Dallas, go to drink after. Kombucha. Yeah, not much of a drink. That's good for you. Satisfied. I see Kendall drinking that on the weekend. And uh. Can you name uh, your oh, top five yeah. favorite curators in the game? Me, 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 dog. Like, I, I, I hate to sound like a dick. I, I shit you not. I hate, when, I hate now that everybody uses curator, curated collection. Like, nigga, you ain't doing shit. Because, like, you know, now <laughs> it's been more popularized. And now you're seeing a lot more curators pop up, and now they curate different types of fashion. I'm a clothing snob, so, like, yeah. I... I don't. I think most of these people out here don't have a sense of style to their name. Mm. Like, uh, so I laugh when Kendall, I see all these all facts. these pages talking about facts. like, oh, a curated selection of clothing. It's like no, it's not. Like, like stop using these key words. Like, oh, it's it's vegan. It's curated. No, it's whack. Is is there anyone that you, that you've noticed like that that you don't really like? Oh, uh, not anybody I could pick out. I think it's just we'll in general. Um. But there are people who, who do have some dope stuff. Like, I love my man at Apartment 4B, the way uh -huh. he curated his space, where it looks like some old, grimy, like, trap house in New York in the 90s. That place is dope, and, like, the clothing pieces match it. Uh, Tried and True has a great selection. He's got, like, his mid stuff, and he's got his low grills up there. Um, so they've always had some amazing pieces. But as far as, like, this whole new generation of kids talking about curated collections, like, uh, step your game up, man. Damn. And I don't mean to sound arrogant. I'm just, I'm a clothing snob, man. Like, you know, that's know a fact. I, like. I mean, yeah. I, you know what you like. I was going to say yeah, that. I pride myself on my eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it ain't about hype. Like, like I, it irks me to see somebody in full Balenci head to toe that looks like trash. Like, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> nodding. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, everyone here is dope. They're doing themselves, man. That's the best thing. Like, like fashion is an outward extension of your personality, right? So, mm -hmm. You know, just do you. Is, is there any new projects that you're working on right now? Nothing right now, man. Um, um, I'm kind of looking for a space to do a pop up shop. You know, I used to have a small. Um, it was my office that I turned into a small, like, private boutique right here down the street. Um, mm -hmm. But after, um, after the pandemic, and then during the pandemic. Uh, I had a little situation with my health where I had to kind of take a step back and I had to close shop because uh, I spent, you know, a good amount of time, you know, off my feet. So um, I've kind of been looking for a place to, to reopen and set up shop again, just do a pop-up shop and, uh, and kind of like show people what, you know, what I was doing before, like what I had my hands on, like who I've worked with, like, mm -hmm. you know, and... I, I say this in the most humble way possible, but like, you know, there's such a huge craze for like vintage clothing right now. And I really feel that like, I really had a hand in ushering that in. Mm -hmm. And no, you did. I, I, I remember you from the, when I first started vintage. Man. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate yeah. that. And like I said, like, um, I give much props mm -hmm. to you. Cause like, you push it heavy, man. Like your energy is amazing. I love Thank it. You. And you, constantly on it um i've always been a little more laid back and mellow like but it kind of worked for me because it was that word of mouth type like my mm -hmm. whole like my 
my archive and my little boutique, it wasn't open to the public. It was like mm-hmm. on some private shit. Like, you ever gone to Gucci? And yeah. shop there? Like, yeah. you know, they make you feel good, man. They sit you down. You want some coffee. You want yeah, some champagne. champagne. They really cater to you. So, like, my mm-hmm. whole thing was like, I want to give that experience to people. Like, I don't, like, I ha- I used to have an online boutique, but I prefer doing the, you know, the one-on-one because, like, there's a story to tell. Yo, you got to feel this silk, man. Like, mm-hmm. like, or feel this wool, feel this leather. Like, look how it drapes on you. So, um, that's will, what I was in the Will product. there be a champagne at the pop-up shop? Of course. Nice. Mm. Come on, we got to cater to everybody. Um, but that's kind of what I'm, I'm kind of working on right now, trying to see in, in which way I can bring it back to life, whether I'm going to do a pop-up. Um, what type of pieces can we expect to see? I, I love timeless pieces. So, like, everything from, like, Dapper Dan to Versace silks to just, like, just rare pieces, you know, whether from the 80s or 90s, or even something modern that was a rare, you know, limited run. Because um, to me, it's always been about not only authenticity and originality, but just having one-of-a-kind pieces. Like knowing, like when I finally got drug into styling, and my whole thing was like, all right, like, anybody who wants to get styled, like, it's coming out of my personal archive. Yeah. Because that way, there's no way in hell you're going to go to this event and bump into somebody wearing the same thing. Um, like, even with the Gucci, the Guchenstein stuff, the first iteration of the Guchenstein, I was taking uh, the crew neck, the vintage bootleg sweatshirts and chopping them in half and, and mix and matching them. Um, just because I remember I had clients who wanted to wear Gucci. I'm like, yo, it's so hot. Like, I, I, like it was so popping at the time. I didn't want to put him in something that he ran You're the chance of, yeah. of bumping into somebody wearing it. So that's why I was like, well, let me flip these. You know what I mean? Let me let me do a half and half. And that's how that started. Um, what can we expect for your opening day fit? Is it gonna be Gucci and Stein, or is it gonna be all Versace? I is it gonna be it. Jordan Five tracksuit? Ah, I like that. Taking notes, man. I, I don't know, man. I guess with the what? I like the whatever it matches with the champagne. There it is, man. The glass. Day. You know, you got- put that in the notes, Kenny. That's the next caption. <laughs> Damn, it's um, good. Yeah, it's good. If if you could, um, because I know you're an inspiration to me. You're probably an inspiration to people that are watching this. What um, what advice can you give to uh, people that are like coming up? Damn, I could probably. I think I might be better at giving advice of what not to do. But yeah. <laughs> um. Do something you love. Like I said, um, I love clothing, and it was, I never bought it to flip. Like, and I know that's probably not the most, like, economical business thing to, to do, but, like, that's why I, I loved clothing. I bought it. I bought it for myself, and it was cool that I was able to, like, become, my first business card said Fresh Broker, because it was like, I have fresh shit. People wanted it. Like, I had sunglasses and dookie chains and, like, Gucci links. So I was able to sell stuff, you know, sell, like, I I loved getting doubles because I was like, okay, now I can keep it and sell it. Um, Do something you love. Do your research, too. Do your work. Like, do your due diligence. Like, like, if you want to be be a a stylist, like, study it, man. Study fashion. Anybody can go on Instagram and see what's trending and and dress them. But no, like, think outside the box. Think for yourself. Like, if you want to be a stylist. Um... If you want to go into retail, man, I think you are the prime example. Like, you got to, like, be in their faces. People don't realize, like, being an entrepreneur is a full-time job. Like, yeah. and it's the more you give, the more you put in, the more you get out of it. So uh, just be your number one fan. Like, again, that's one of my problems. I'm too laid back sometimes. But, like, you got to promote yourself because if you don't, who else is going to so like mm-hmm. and i think you know that and you do that very well brother thank you and i look up to you i don't, I don't know like um thank you. you posted something the other day the reason why you made your uh your your yay uh yeah the kanye yeah, west plus you, know, you posted about 10 operations going through shit and like that never stopped you like it blew my mind when i found out about that because yeah. i went through some medical shit and it made me halt the brakes like a motherfucker like yeah and for you for you to go through that shit that was worse than what I went through and never stop. That's amazing. So salute 
salute to you, my man. Like, thank you. Like, that's thank amazing. You. So that's if, if any piece of advice, yeah, yeah. any piece of advice is do what you love and go hard and always trust your gut. Like, I'm a hippie at heart, mm -hmm. and so I just kind of like I wish I could say like I remember seeing this interview with Pharrell, and he's like, I just Mr. Magoo it like. Kanye has a plan written out and everything is going according to plan where like Pharrell is like kind of wings it and mm -hmm. I wish I was the Kanye but I am more like Pharrell I kind of wing it and just Less. and yeah and just follow so. my gut and the few times that I went against my gut it bit me you should have went with your gut yeah so yeah. go with your gut man last mm -hmm. quick question um, so. are you going to cop anything from the Nego auction I don't know if you've seen that. I don't got that. I don't got that Jupiter G Monk. I don't. Ah, oh shit. Yeah, these some beautiful pieces. The one thing Kenny I said he needed a pink one. I don't know if you guys saw, but the millionaire bag is literally worth a million dollars. Like that's the cost on it. It's a Croc Speedy bag. Croc, if anybody knows, is expensive as hell. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is the most ultimate stunt. Literally, it's called a millionaire bag, and it's literally a million bucks. And if I, I know, if I had, if I had the dough to cop that, I would just to shit on people. But, <laughs> yeah. Need that when I'm bringing around the PS Five. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so just to like kind of wrap things up, any anything plugins, anything you're working on, any what's the app? Yeah, what's uh, the app? Marco the Curator. It's M A R K O, the Curator. Uh, Dr. Guggenstein, that's D R G U C C E N S T I no E I N. It's just like Gucci, Frankenstein with a little bit of Gucci in there. Um, I got another collection I'm dropping on there. That to me, I, I enjoy oh. doing. You know, it's it's creating, it's designing, um, it's having fun with you know different prints um, and patterns. Can we expect some music coming out? Oh, hell <laughs> and I was gonna say, if you're coming out with music, you could use that name, Doctor Gucci. That'd be hard, right? That'd yeah, be that'd that would be kind of hard. Um, watch me on Pawn Stars, man. I'm doing a, I'm, I'm flying out to go do some episodes with them next week. So oh. hopefully in the next couple do they months. do a quick question? Sorry, keep continuing, yeah, but yeah, do they tell you in advance what it's gonna be or? Yeah, I think you know, um, people hit them up with like stuff, and if. They like it and it's of intrigue for them. Mm -hmm. Then they'll hit up like the people me to... and be like, "Hey, like somebody's trying to sell us this. Is it worth it?" Like, because those guys are knowledgeable as hell. Mm -hmm. But whenever like they don't know something, mm -hmm. you know, they hit me up. It's just like the TV show was when they're like, "Oh, I don't know about this, but let me call my guy." It's literally it. Yeah, so, I'm, so I'm that guy. Pawn stars. So. What what days do they show? Oh man, I couldn't tell you, brother. On uh, on A and E, I think. A uh, definitely A and E, &E. or to YouTube watch. too. Yeah. Uh, se yeah, seven Eastern, seven Central. But it's super dope. If y'all yeah. never seen it before, y'all like it. I think you'll like it. I like it. No, I, I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not just plugging <laughs> it because I'm on it, but uh, it's a dope show. They always got some cool shit in there for somebody like us and like y'all watching this, like who are into like rarities and knickknacks and oddities, like like that Pawn Star show is so dope. So and it's cool that like. They got somebody from our culture and Chum Lee, the one of the guys in there, who's into this type of stuff. So like, that's how and, I was able to get in there. And, and can we expect in two thousand twenty four a pop up? Um, uh, God willing, man. I hope so. I'm still trying to map it all out. Um, we'll see. Like I said, I, I kind of go with the wind. Because me and Daniel will be first in line. My man, I appreciate that. In some Versace shirts. <laughs> yeah, ready to <laughs> ready to pop us. some bottles. As long as <laughs> handsome and wealthy is playing, we in there. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just, I don't know if it's ego or like, but yeah, I'm definitely like, I'm def I definitely got to sh show the world like what, you know, what I did and what I was responsible for and, you know, what little ripple. You know, I'm not saying I'm, I did all this and that, but I definitely like started that ripple that started that butterfly effect for certain things, man. So, and I see a lot of motherfuckers blowing up and say, yo, let me, let me show you where it started. Let me so, back in. <laughs> uh, nah, let me just show you where it started and y'all can have it, man. I'm, I'm, I'll be happy with that and move on to the next. So. Well, Marco, honestly, it's 
been an honor, literally, oh, for having a conversation with me. you. I'm honored to be here. I appreciate yeah. you, man. Thank you so much for, for everything, your time, um, all that good you stuff. That. Thank both of y'all for having yeah. me. Yeah. Sorry, Best curator no, sorry if I ramble on. Marco the curator. <laughs> I'm a, no, I'm a no. clothing nerd. That's no, of course. Yeah. I know we could go for hours and hours and hours. Oh, God, yeah. But we need some B roll. Yeah, yeah we're, not, we're gonna do a part two soon. I'm with it, man. Yeah, thank you, Marco. Appreciate right, thank it. You, brother, peace. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go. The man you've been waiting for. The drum beater, the drum beater.